I'm JJ Wild and this is Loud TV. Uh, well, nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. How's life in Paris? Amazing. I love Paris. I, I actually, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I think you, it's not the first time, right? No, this will be the fifth or sixth time I've been here now. Yeah, and every time is better than the last. Um, new album is called? Vices. Vices? Yep. Do you know Vices? <laughs> <laughs> Do I? No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this, this album title means a lot to me in, in a bunch of different ways. I think that it encompasses a lot of the journey that I was on when I was creating this album. Um, you know, it's about um, accepting the vices that you have. It's about recognizing them, not letting them control your life. You know, there's, there's a lot of different vices, I think, today. You know, there's the immediate ones. There's, you know, smoking, drinking, that kind of thing. But then there's also... You know, I find comfort to be a vice for some people, myself included, especially. You know, you get yourself into a comfortable situation, whether that's a relationship or whatever it is. And I find when you sit in that for too long, you're less likely to, you know, experience new things and put yourself out there in a way that allows you to grow. And so that is a big one for me to, to overcome is, you know, constantly trying to put myself into uncomfortable situations to then allow myself to grow through that. Um, and, you know, there's the vices of like drinking and stuff. It's like you can allow those in your life and learn how to control them and have them not control your life, not have your vices get the best of you. Um, so there's, there's a lot of meaning behind that for the whole album. There are vices everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I think drinking on the road is a, is a big one. Um, and as somebody, you know, I struggled with uh, stage fright. And, you know, um, I've learned to channel that into excited energy and learn how to control that. But for a long time, I would just drink before the show to, to allow myself to kind of like loosen up and get into the groove and stuff. And um, I just recently did my first completely sober tour um, just to know that I could to know that that vice didn't have a hold on me and that I was able to perform with or without alcohol, which is very freeing, because now I can pick and choose, right? I'm not dependent on one or the other. And you're from Canada? Yeah. Is it a vice? <laughs> <laughs> Some would say yes, I would say no. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love Canada. I mean, it, it's my home. It's 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 home to me. But the the industry is definitely smaller there. It's um, it's exciting to to break out and be able to go to different countries and travel and have my music be accepted there and loved there. It's it's uh, it's very surreal. I was wondering, what do what do you where do you write your music? Is there a special place or when you're on the bike, when you walk? When you're on a beach, I it's, don't know. It's honestly everywhere. Um, I find a lot of my writing I do in, when I'm writing alone. It'll be in my living room or, you know, sometimes it is when I'm out hiking. I'll start kind of humming to myself and then all of a sudden without realizing it, I'm singing a thing. And then I have to like grab my phone like, oh, I don't want to forget that. And, you know, you get into that like frantic mode. Um, but I write everywhere and I really enjoy... Um, uh, set, like session writing as well with other people I find that really um, interesting and you always you know meeting a new person and writing a song that day I think is such a cool accomplishment because you didn't know that person yesterday and then all of a sudden you're sharing your deepest darkest you know uh, secrets and feelings uh, with a complete stranger and then you make beautiful art out of that I find that to be really really rewarding um, but yeah there isn't I wouldn't say there's just one place it's it's kind of everywhere I'm writing all the time I found the, the sound of the, uh, the album m much better than the previous one. Uh, uh, what did you it's recall? It's difficult to compare, you know, you, you can't pick your favorite kid, but um, I think that I'm proud of this album and it's very true to, to what I, who I am and where I've been and, you know, the experiences that I've had and I try to portray that in all my music really. Um, so for me it's just kind of, when I look at both of them, it's looking at snapshots of my life. So you can't pick one or the other because 
it's different times, I was going through different things, and I like the, the sound to evolve and grow as I evolve and grow as a person. Um, so there's no favorites. I think they're both beautiful for different, for different reasons. So this one was done mostly in LA. Um, actually, no, the whole thing was done in LA. I met my producer in Nashville, funny enough, and then we, we recorded in his studio in LA. I think what I'm most proud of from this record is the vulnerability that was showcased through each song. I think previously on my my other releases, I've I've kind of held up this hard shell exterior that is, you know, it is a part of who I am, but it's not all of who I am. And with this album, I really felt like I allowed people into more of my life and a more personal side, a bit of a softer side and a more vulnerable side than I ever have before. Um, and so for me, I'm, I'm really proud of, of that because it's difficult to let people in that way. It's difficult, it's like reading an entry of your journal. You don't want to read that to somebody, right? But um, it was very cathartic to allow people into that world of mine. And I'm also proud of the evolution of the sound that instead of trying to fit, you know, this is what I want the record to sound like, I'm gonna write songs to sound like this. Instead, I was writing from a place where I was trying to tell a story and I wanted each song to serve a different purpose and it didn't matter what lane it landed in, I just wanted to serve the song in what I thought was gonna be best for each song and then put that all together in an album. So it was a bit of a different way of organizing the album as well, but um, yeah, I'm proud of all of it. <laughs> And do you feel some kind of naked when you... Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's terrifying to, to let people into your, your darkest moments. You know, those are, the, those are the things you want to forget and move past. And so to put it on a record means that it's going to be out there forever, you know? So you definitely feel like, you know, you're walking through the street without clothes on. <laughs> uh, there is a, this new single, uh, I'm Not Crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was wondering, who's the asshole? <laughs> so, I mean, there's many, no. Um, <laughs> this earth is full of assholes, right? It's true, it's true. No, this one in particular, um, I was bullied in high school, um, and this song for me was kind of an ode to that time in my life where I wasn't as confident and I wasn't as sure of myself and I didn't really know how to stand up for myself yet. And through that experience, it taught me how to stand up for myself and have a backbone and and recognize, you know, right and wrong and, and really find where I stand between those and not be, you know, precious about it and like, this is it. Um, and so that song for me is kind of an ode to them and it was everything I wanted to say at the time but didn't have the strength to. And so for me, writing that song was kind of for anybody else going through that situation, they'd be able to listen to it and maybe learn how to stand up for themselves and, and find courage in that as well. It's hard. And it's, it's sad when, you know, a lot of times that stuff just stems from other people's insecurities and, and not feeling good about themselves, so they project that onto other people, which, you know, I, I feel like life is too short, like we should be bringing each other up instead. And so for me it was kind of a, a screw you to all those people. <laughs> Very bad language, but yeah. never mind. <laughs> On the contrary, there is a beautiful song, uh, Perfect Stranger. Uh, so, it's like, you, do you like the unknown? You know, it's like uh, you're meeting someone, uh, is it uh, like a... So that song actually is closing the chapter on a relationship at um, was almost the catalyst of this whole record. You know, I, uh, I went through a terrible breakup. I got dumped the day before a two-month tour <laughs> that I was going on. And, you know, I was living with this person. You know, we were kind of building a life together and all of a sudden it was gone. And the, you know, relationships are so fragile in that sense and you don't think about that when you're in the relationship you know you're in love you think it's gonna last forever and and some do you know I'm not completely jaded but um, that song for me was realizing and accepting that you can go from being everything to somebody to being nothing and you have to live with that 
but you have to accept that that person doesn't define you, that person doesn't make you lovable, that person doesn't, that isn't the good parts of you. You have to find that for yourself. And so for me, that song was closing the chapter and it was a final goodbye of, you know, we were everything to each other and now we're strangers. And that is the reality of a lot of, you know, relationships, as sad as it is, that happens. And um, that, yeah, that for me was working through that and being able to finally close that chapter. Nevertheless, it's a, I would say, anger, angry album, right? It's ang I think there's anger, but there's a range of emotions. There's anger, there's frustration, there's sadness, there's excitement, there's empowerment, there's, there's a roller coaster because that was the two years. It was a turbulent two years of touring constantly while trying to grieve this relationship, while trying to get back to who I am and, and everything like that. So it was just navigating that part of my life. So there's, there's a lot, there's a wide range of emotions that more than just anger. But I think, I think the overall arching theme would be, you know, self-discovery and, uh, and personal growth and empowerment, really. I feel in the music, it's like kind of uh, 90s rock, I would say. You know, uh, like uh, it could be uh, the the music for Dawson Creek. You know, this, <laughs> I love it. You love it? You, yeah. know, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. It could be the the perfect sound soundtrack. You know. I love that. Yeah. For me, I wanted this song or this this record um, to be something that you could, you know, get on the road roll the windows down and just drive and listen to the record. So for me it's kind of a road trip record, um, but I like the Dawson's Creek thing, that's cool. <laughs> or Beverly Hills. Or yeah. Whatever, you know? But you, you were not born at that time, right? No, I mean just, just, I think. 90, yeah, early, early 90s. What did, what did you listen to when you were just a kid? When I was a kid, there was a lot of more classic rock, you know, um, Led Zeppelin, there was Bruce Springsteen, um, Paul Simon, but then I also found my own sense of music, which was a little more folk. I got really into like Damien Rice, Bob Dylan, um, Amy Winehouse, Janice. Um, and then when I kind of, in my teens, it was more pop and rap and kind of like what was on the radio and stuff. And then my taste in music has evolved over the years as well. And, and now I just, I love all music, like indie artists, I love, still love rock, classical music, I love, like I, I have no genre, it's just, if it's good I'll listen to it, um, but you know, yeah, there's a ton of influences. Did you listen to Kiss? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think you... you I opened for them. <laughs> What a great experience, right? Oh my gosh, it was a, that was like a dream come true. That was absolutely insane. It didn't feel like reality. <laughs> uh, how did you prepare? How did you prepare for? I mean, the same as you prepare for any show, right? You rehearse, you try to do the best you can and just hope that you don't screw up. <laughs> uh, there is piano in the record, guitars, your lyrics. Did you write everything? So I wrote, um, it's, a, it's a mix. I, it was a mix of songs that I had written by myself. It was a mix of um, being in sessions with other people. So it's kind of a collaborative. Like me and the producer then, Steve Solomon, went in and wrote a lot of the guitar riffs and everything like that. But it was very collaborative. It wasn't just me. Um, I can't take credit for the whole thing. It was very collaborative effort of long nights in the studio, trying to trying to get the the right part you know you go back and forth oh that sounds great can you uh change this note and make it sound a little bit more like that okay now let's try this that so it was, it was kind of that vibe which is my favorite way to create um you play live paris tomorrow yes uh is there a full european tour no not yet that's coming that's coming we just have the show in paris tomorrow and then we're doing a showcase in uh, Belgium on Friday, but the European tour is coming. <laughs> um, and next, what's next for this fall? And yes, this fall I'm going on a headlining Canadian tour all across Canada 
really excited um, to bring the new set to the to the audience, have a new energy of the show, be able to mix in some of my old catalog in with the new album. I'm just really excited to bring this album to to the audience. And next year? Do next you know? year? I don't know yet, but uh, I'm not planning to slow down anytime soon. So. <laughs> I'm thinking more touring, more music. I'm already working on the next thing, so.